بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today is the last session in the last article or pillar of faith believing in predestination القدر uh, In the previous uh, session we said that قدر or predestination is a matter from the unseen الغيب which only Allah عز وجل knows However there are two situations or two cases when this unseen or unknown becomes known to human beings. The first case is after it actually happens. So you know that this is something that was predestined. The Qadr of Allah was this. The second case or situation is something or some of the things that happened or that were said by the Prophet ﷺ and actually took place. Like for example, when he ﷺ informed that the Romans will defeat the Persians as Allah Azza wa said this in the Quran. So the Prophet Sallallahu conveyed that and it was from the unknown. It's something in the future and it happened as he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Uh, other things that did not yet take place but he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that it is from the future Qadr. Things like at the Jal, the uh, Antichrist, uh, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, and other things that will take place prior to the advent of the hour. May ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us firm and make us die on the state of Islam and resurrect us on that state when that day comes. Now, a very important point. Can someone commit a sin or refrain from uh, fulfilling an obligation under the pretext that this is Qadr, Allah had predestined this to happen. Whoever does that will be punished if it's something that deserves a worldly punishment, a penal law, according to the penal law, the, the hudud. And we will tell him that this punishment was also decreed. This is also the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. Some of the scholars said, if someone comes to you and says, I can do this and, and refrain from doing that because it's the Qadr, they say, slap him on the face. And if he would to object to that, justify it saying, well, I have nothing to do with this. This is the Qadr of Allah. Of course, no one will accept that. Regarding the issue of Al-Qadr, predestination, there are three parties or three groups uh, who dealt with the issue in different manners. Two extremes and one balanced group. The two extremes are people who rejected Qadr altogether, which are called Al-Qadaris, who claim that mankind creates his own actions and his deeds, and it's not from Allah. And that Allah Azza wa Jal, some of them went to the extent of saying that Allah does not know about the things that will take place until they do take place. And this entails that Allah Azza wa Jal did not create these actions. Whilst Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'malun. Allah has created you and all that you do. And of course, they are upon extreme falsehood. The second the other ex extreme is, uh, well, before we go to that, who was the first one who invented this issue? It was a Christian person who embraced Islam, at least outwardly, and then he left the fold of Islam and went back to Christianity. And a man by the name of Ma'bad al-Juhani took that from him, took this conviction from him and started spreading it between people. The Prophet ﷺ said about Al-Qadaris, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classed and graded by Al-Albani as sound. He said, Al-Qadariyah, those who are Qadaris, are the majans of this nation. If they fall sick, don't visit them. If they were to die, then don't offer or attend the funeral prayer when it's offered for them. Now, why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make these Qadaris similar to the Magians? 
Well, the scholars said when explaining this hadith, as Al-Khattabi said, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, these two deviants have something in, similar, uh, in, in common. They have similarities. The Magians say that good is uh, created or done by light or the God of goodness. And evil is done by darkness or God of evil. And so they attribute the, the evil and the good and evil to do to two different entities. And this is exactly what Qadaris do. They attribute goodness to Allah and evil to one's own self. And this is the similarity and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu uh, made them or give this, gave this similitude about them. The second extreme was Al-Jabriya. Al-Jabriya, those who claim that the slave is compelled, is forced to do what he's doing and he has no choice about the matter. They say his similitude is like that of a feather in a blowing wind. It just moves and this is how mankind are and everything created uh, they, they, it, everything that's created is like that. They have no say, no intention, no will. They don't control anything and they're forced to do with uh, w whatever they do. And this is also falsehood because if we claim that or whoever claims that is saying there is no need for books to be revealed. There is no need for messengers to be sent. Because if people are going to be forced and compelled to do whatever they're doing, then there's no reason to waste time and send these messengers and prophets and reveal these books. And the first person who came up with this deviance was Al-Jahm ibn Safwan. Now the balanced and moderate and, and correct and sound faith is that of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Those who confirm that nothing happens except that Allah had willed it, but they also say that the slave has his own will and he can act upon his own will. And therefore, he will be held accountable for what he or she does. Uh, whether it's good, then he will be rewarded or evil, then he will be punished. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ For those, for whoever wills among you to take a right course. So now this confirms that there is a will for mankind to take the right course. And then Allah says, continues to say, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ But you cannot will to do so unless Allah, the Lord of the worlds, wills. So this leads us to the, or conti we continue to talk about, is a person, does the person have the choice to do what he wants to do? Or is he compelled to do what he is doing? Before we address this issue, or continue to address this issue, we must highlight two important matters. Number one is that we must believe in the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Imam Ahmad, may Allah have mercy on him, said when he was asked about Al-Qadr, predestination, he said, Al-Qadr Qudratullah. It reflects the quality of ability and capability of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, this means that Allah Azza wa Jal is capable of giving the slave, he or she, the free will to intend and want and act upon that and translate that into an action whilst making it at the same time within all that he had predestined subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we must understand that Allah Azza wa Jal is all capable, is just, is all knowing and wise. Believing on the, in, in all of these 
will bring the picture or make the picture clearer, brings us closer to understand what the situation is with regards to Al-Qadr. The other issue which is extremely important is to remember all the time that this is part of the unknown. It is ghaib. And anything that is unknown to you, you cannot actually realize, comprehend the true essence of it. And that's why the only way to deal with this issue is to fully submit to the fact that Allah had predestined and that we have a will. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, for the complexity of this, uh, uh, of this issue, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by At-Tabarani and classed as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, إِذَا ذُكِرَ الْقَدَرُ فَأَمْسِكُوا When the issue of predestination is mentioned, then hold, hold your tongue. Don't continue talking about details. Why? Because a person will eventually come to a point where he cannot go beyond because the capacity of our brain is limited as decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal, and we will not comprehend, we, can, we will not be able to perceive the true essence of the situation of Al-Qadr. So the, the slave is not completely compelled, nor is he completely free of will. He's not completely compelled because Allah had instilled in him a will and enabled him freely to act upon his will. Just like a Sheikh Al-Albani when he was talking about this issue once uh, and explaining it to people, he said, those who say that we're compelled to do what we're doing, I am talking now. And then he paused. He said, I chose to stop. Nothing forced me to stop. And the scholars say, whoever rejects this point is very irrational because everything proves that we are doing things with our own free will. And he is not, this is the first uh, part of it, and then he's, uh, the, the second part of it is that we're not totally free to do everything in the sense that we don't do anything beyond and outside the control and the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that Allah had willed this, had known this, recorded this, and when it happened, he had created it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to happen. Some people say, Allah Azza wa Jal, I, I sin because Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined this. And since this was my predestination, I did it. Scholars say, how do you know that Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined that you will be a sinner? Why did you not assume that Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined for you to be a pious person and acted upon this assumption instead of that? It is because you chose to act upon this and not that, freely or free of will. Uh, Shaykh al Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi said that whatever the, the person does is certainly doing it with his own choice and will. And whenever he wants to do something and then he does it, it is only then that we know that this was what was predestined before he did it. We will not know until it actually takes place. And therefore, he was responding to those who say, well, it's predestined. Now, this is one, one side of it. There is another side that addresses issues that there is no control of, for mankind over, just like falling sick, dying, uh, going into an accident, tornadoes that take place, wh whatever. These issues that mankind actually have no control over, regardless of their own free will, they will not control being getting sick or not getting sick. Yes, one can attempt to kill her, himself or herself, attempt to commit suicide, for example, but if it's not 
predestined for him or her to die at that given point, then he or she will not die. Yes, we can attempt, but these matters are fully and completely in the hand of Allah Azza wa Now, confirming that everything is predestined does not negate or contradict the free will man has to do whatever they want to do with their own choice and their own will. So they do it in reality with their own will and Allah Azza wa Jal gave them this ability to do it whilst it was actually predestined. I keep emphasizing on this because it is an issue that many people went astray when addressing it or got involved in some of its details. And let me again remind, because uh, questions that came in the past, not in this course, about predestination and the details of predestination and how can two things that appear to be contradicting each other coexist we say that Allah Azza wa Jal is all capable to make two contradictions happen. The essence of how he can do that is unknown to us because this is part of his qualities, the essence of which we don't understand or comprehend because he subhanahu wa ta'ala had created us in this manner. And the safest way is to act upon the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the issue of predestination is addressed, then hold back. Don't involve yourself in details. I think this is enough explaining the issue. Let's uh, move on to another issue which is benefits and impacts of belief in predestination. There are two matters that people usually uh, mishandle themselves when dealing uh, with them. The future and the past. A believer who believes that, firmly believes that everything is predestined by Allah Azza wa Jal, it establishes in his heart that everything in this universe is in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal and the control of Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, he does not fear the future. He doesn't worry about the future. So this is one thing that people causes people to worry and uh, become anxious. And some people go into the state of depression as much as they fear or what's hidden in the future. The second issue is the past. One of the uh, issues that cause psychological problems to many people is grieving over the past. Some people, whenever they're struck with a calamity or a hardship or go through difficult times, they continue months and even years remembering and recollecting these sad, dark days, regretting at times why they did this and that, and wishing at other times why did they not do this or that. They either say, I should have, or I should have not done. And therefore doctors, psychiatrists and psychologists, and social counselors advise people when dealing with their past is to totally forget the past because the past simply will never come back. The past, in simple words, cannot be changed. So regardless of how much you think about it, you grieve over it, none of it will change and none of it will come back for you to act otherwise. And that's why believing in in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, reassures the heart 
makes the person calm and relaxed and saves him or her from uh, psychological problems. Believing in an in predestination makes the person think good of his Lord, expect the best from his Lord. And this raises the factor of hope in Allah Azza wa Jal and makes him or her an optimistic person about future matters. It also makes the person realize or know his size, in other words. It will make one realize how incapable he is to know what will happen or how things happen or why things happened and that he is in need of Allah during all situations and all times and then this will lead him to resort to Allah Azza wa Jal for aid and support. It makes a person satisfied. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and this is reported by a Tirmidhi class as sound by Al Albani he said, be satisfied with what Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed for you. You will become the most satisfied and content of all people. Meaning, you will feel that you have all you need and you don't need anything else. Why? Because you're happy with what Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined for you. So you're satisfied with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and thus you're satisfied with your own situation. Also, it makes a person lead a balanced life. He neither despairs when he's struck with an adversity, nor he is ungrateful and forget the blessings and the source of the blessings when Allah blesses him with something. So when he's blessed with something, when Allah Azza wa Jal showers him with favors, he will remember because he knows that it's predestined by Allah that it is Allah is the, that is the source, or is the, who is the source for this. And it's not his own intelligence and experience and skills. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings you have are from Allah. Another issue or, or uh, benefit or fruit of believing in predestination is the realization of servitude to Allah. When the slave is certain that everything is in the hand of Allah he will seek the help of Allah, the support of Allah in all his matters and affairs and resort to him alone, submitting and humbling himself to him alone. And this is the essence and the core of servitude to Allah. It rids the community from many social uh, sicknesses such as for example envy a believer who believes in predestination in al-qadr will not envy people for whatever favors and blessings allah Azza wa had bestowed upon them and he is certain that it is something that allah had predestined for them as provision and he held it back from him or her for a wisdom he knows he is the all-knowing and he knows what is best for me. And therefore he predestines that which is best for me. And this will make him satisfied and content and will not start looking at people and envying people. Because, you know, when you envy someone, the reality of the matter is that you're not objecting to that person who, ha who was blessed by Allah. You're actually objecting to Allah himself who had predestined this to happen or decreed for him to have or her to have this blessing or that. Right. Another issue is that it helps a person persevere through uh, difficult times because when uh, something befalls a person, he or she realized that whatever good or evil that happens is something that Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined. And then remembering that Allah is all wise, all knowing, all merciful, makes the heart firm during difficulties and makes the believer act with this or react to this based on the saying of Allah, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ 
يهدي قلبه. No disaster strikes except by the permission of Allah and whoever believes in Allah, he will guide his heart. Alqama, may Allah have mercy on him, commented on this verse. He said, it is, a, it is about the person who, when struck with a difficulty, realizes that it is from Allah and thus becomes content and submits to the will of Allah. Many of us who live, had lived and continue to live in the Western communities, have read and watched a lot of incidents where non-Muslims have resorted to suicide. Some of them lost their mind, and some resorted to drugs and alcohol to escape the reality they're living in. When they go through difficult times, these are the different ways they handle or they deal with the situation because they don't have this belief in their heart. Who would, as we said, make them otherwise as believers, content and happy? and submitting to that will of Allah Azza wa Final point is that believing in predestination makes a person far from associating with Allah Azza wa A believer is commanded to utilize all, all worldly means. However, he's also commanded not to, real, to rely and depend with his or her heart on these means because relying and depending on the means on the worldly means is a form of shirk associating with Allah Azza wa Jal. The believer who believes in predestination utilizes the means but his heart is with Allah Azza wa Jal alone because he knows that it is only Allah who can bring benefit or cause harm. With this, I conclude tonight's session. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who are firm believers in all the articles of faith, who live their lives in accordance to their implications. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.